In this video, we are going to be adding this carousel, these carousels on the home page. And to implement them, we are going to use a jQuery plugin called Sleek Carousel. So if you search on Google for Sleek Carousel and you click on this Kinwila GitHub link, you will be taken to the official site for the carousel where you can see a few demos and uh, code snippets to show you how the carousel works. Okay, we're going to come back to this very soon. The first step I want us to make is to uh, write the HTML for the carousels before we proceed. So the entire collection or uh, components has two main parts when you look at it vertically. We have the header, which basically has the title and this see all link. And then we have the slider itself beneath it. So we are going to write our HTML accordingly. So I'll open index.html in the public section. And then I scroll to the area where I defined the HTML for the featured post. And then immediately after that, still within the page container, I'm going to add another, uh, let me just make it a section. I'll give it a class of page section and then another class of uh, carousel container. Now, the reason I'm giving it a class of page section is, if you look at the finished project, there is a bit of margin between each section and the other. So if you look at this carousel and the one under it, there is some margin. And after that, between this one and the next section, there is some margin. So the page section is going to provide us the styles to enable the various sections of the page to be uniformly spaced. Okay, so now we are going to add the next uh, element or the next part of the carousel, which is the header. I'm just going to call it carousel header. And inside this header, we will have an H2 heading element that will bear the title of the carousel or the collection. I'm just going to call it best of 2022. And then we will also have a link to all or see all. Okay, and that will be it for the um, heading part or the header part of the carousel. The next part we are going to add is the slider itself. We'll give it a class of post slider. And inside this slider, we're going to have uh, a few of these articles. Okay, we already wrote the styles for these articles in the in one of the previous videos. And we basically said that if you want a flat card, if you want a vertical card, we'll just make sure we give the HTML for this article only the postcard class. Okay, so if we copy the HTML for this article, the featured article, and paste it inside the post slider, in order to achieve the vertical card, we only need to remove the flat card class as well as this featured post class. And if we do this, we are going to get our vertical card, which is what you see here. So this is the first uh, article inside our slider. We're going to need a few more articles just to make sure we see how the slider works. And uh, just to just to note, we haven't yet added the slider. We're just adding the HTML for it. Okay, so I'm going to copy this article within the post slider element. And then I will paste it a couple of times. In fact, I'll paste it like three times so that we have four uh, articles inside our slider. And let us go back to the page and refresh. Okay, so it is being stacked vertically. Uh, and that is fine because we haven't yet written the stars to align it properly. And before we do that, I want us to integrate the carousel first because it is going to add some initial um, alignment changes on the way the articles are being placed. So if you go to the website for Sleek Carousel, we can integrate it in a few ways. We can click on the Get It Now link on the navigation bar and we'll be taken to this section where we can basically just copy the uh, link to the CSS 
and the link to the JavaScript and add it in our code. But I usually don't uh, want to copy uh, links to libraries on their documentations because the versions can be outdated. So I usually go to CTNJS, which is basically a, a platform with thousands of libraries. Almost every library can be found here. And if you want a library, you will just type the name of the library. You want slick carousel, and this is it. You click on it, and it will take you to this page where you can see several uh, versions of files related to that library. So the one, we, the ones we are interested in are the JavaScript and the CSS. Now, there are many JavaScripts here. The one that we want is the minified version, the one that ends with .min.js. Minified here simply means that um, the code inside this library has been reduced in size and all empty spaces and long variable names and all those things that make a file heavy have been reduced. So when you copy this tag now and we add it on our website, it's going to load a lot faster because it's minified. Okay, so that's the JavaScript you just copied. I'm going to go to the bottom and add it just before the link to the icons. So I'll just label it with a comment before I paste. And then we go back and we grab the minified uh, CSS as well. This is it. We don't need any of these themes and so on. So just the JavaScript and the CSS are fine. And let's make sure that while including the CSS, we include it above the other includes for the other CSS files because these CSS, uh, the CSS we write here, some of them are going to be overriding the styles that we will use in um, the styles that the slick carousel comes with. So I'll also label with a comment and then paste a link to the CSS. Okay, and with that, we can go back to the website and we look at those demos again and look for one that we want to uh, model our, our carousel after. Basically, anyone here will work. Um, any one of these will work. We are still going to modify it after we add it. So basically, what you see here is the autoplay class here is selecting the container that contains all these uh, uh, articles or slides inside the slider. All right, so let us uh, paste it on our project. At the very bottom, I'll indicate here slick carousel, and then I'll paste the snippet I just copied. And you can see that this carousel is using jQuery. It's a jQuery plugin, so it's using jQuery to select the elements that we want to make a carousel out of. So we need to include jQuery, the library jQuery into our project. So we'll go back again to our CDN.js where we have the libraries and we'll search for jQuery. We click on the jQuery link and we copy, copy the minified version of jQuery and we make sure we post it above the include for the carousel. All right, we are pasting it above the include for the carousel scripts because our jQuery is, uh, Carousel, the carousel requires jQuery, so jQuery needs to load first. Okay, having done that, our select here can now work. We just need to pass the correct class for our carousel to let the instance, to let this code to instantiate it. So I'm going to scroll up to our carousel and the container or the element that immediately are our immediately encloses our articles is the post slider container so i'll copy that class and paste it here and then let's go back to our web page and refresh and you can see that our carousel is already uh, uh, sort of working all right 
So one thing, uh, there are a few configurations we need to further make. One of them is we don't want it to be autoplay. Autoplay simply means the carousel is going to be scrolling on its own without you clicking on the next or previous button. We don't want that since uh, we're going to have many of those carousels on the home page and having all of them move on their own is going to be a little bit chaotic. So we're just going to set autoplay to false. And then secondly, you will notice that our images for these articles within the carousel have all disappeared. Now that's not supposed to happen. This is actually a bug with the Slick Carousel plugin, but there is a simple fix for this. Now when you are displaying a carousel using Slick Carousel, the elements or the articles within that carousel should not be displayed using Flex. If you display them using Flex, you're going to have this error that we are seeing right now where one part of the artic articles have disappeared. So the solution is to revert back from using flex to using the normal uh, display. All right, so if you remember correctly, in one of the previous videos, we changed this to display using flex. Um, I'm going to remove the display flex and the other flex property. And when you remove that, flex basis is no longer going to work on the child elements. So we need to revert back to using height. Remember, height is the same as flex basis, but flex basis only works when the parent component has a display of flex. We have removed that display of flex, so now we need to revert back to using height here. And since our flat card was inheriting the styles from postcard, or since our flat, flat card also has the postcard class, we need to make sure that before we set the direction to row on the flat card, we need to also make sure we are displaying it using flex since that has been removed from the postcard. And this doesn't cause us any issues with the slick carousel because we don't use the flat card inside our slick carousels. So this is totally fine. Okay, having done that, if I refresh the page again, you will see that our images have come back. So the next thing I want us to work on is these uh, previous and next buttons. Now, we don't want to use these default buttons. We want to use arrows instead. And in order to get the arrows, we'll need to go back to our icon pack and search for, just search for arrow. And these are the arrows. We can start with the next arrow. Or oh, let me see this one, the forward arrow. We click on it, grab the snippet. And then inside our HTML, we make sure we paste it inside the uh, carousel slider, not inside the post slider. So we will paste it immediately after the carousel header and we'll give it a few classes. Slider arrow. This is going to be the default style to give some defaults like font, like the size of this uh, arrow and so on. And then we have uh, the next class is going to be the next arrow. And we're going to use this to position it to the right side of the carousel. Okay. Then the next icon we want is the uh, back back arrow. So we click on that as well and we copy the snippet. And then we paste it just under the previous one and make sure we assign its own classes. So for the classes, the slider arrow is also going to be here. And then the other, the other class is going to be the brief arrow class. Okay, so let us refresh. And you can see the icons have appeared here. Now this episode is already getting a bit too long. So I'm going to leave it at this and we'll continue in the next video with the uh, remaining styling for this slider.